Okay guys, so welcome back again. If you have been here with me before, if you have not, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Melissa, I put out new videos. Um, at any random given time. Hopefully I'll have a schedule for y'all coming up soon. Um, I feel like this is like cutting my head off. Oh. Um, I'm thinking, so I did a poll on YouTube and it was like cut three ways on when people wanted to see videos. So I'm just gonna do it whenever, um, but probably Wednesdays. And so today I'm actually gonna be doing a Q&A video. Um, I've been kind of compiling questions for it for a while. I was gonna do like separate ones, but I just decided to lump them all into this one and it's a mixture of really personal stuff and then stuff about makeup so you really just never know what you're gonna get with this Q&A. Um, but yeah, I compile a lot of them from like Instagram, Twitter, like stuff people have asked me, like all different kinds of stuff like that. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first question was what are three beauty products that you truly can't live without? Um, I am very much either a full face of makeup or absolutely no makeup kind of person. So there are a lot of beauty, like beauty products I can live without. But the three that I use a lot are I never go anywhere without putting like um, pomade, I think that's what it's called, or like gel in my eyebrows basically just to kind of fill them in. I don't do anything else to my eyebrows other than get them waxed because they're like really full anyway, which was always a problem when I was younger, but now it's great. And so I always use like a pomade just to fill them in. And I, even when I'm not wearing makeup, I usually will do a little bit of that. So that um, bronzer, because I usually have fake tan. And so if I don't match my face to my body, I look a little crazy. And the tanner usually comes off my face sooner than the, my body because I like wash my face and stuff. And then <clears throat> the last one is concealer. I was never a concealer person until kind of recently and now I'm obsessed with it, so I use concealer all the time. I usually use the Shape Tape by Tarte, but now I found this new kind from Maybelline that like is beautiful and works amazing. I just put it on my Instagram, it's the Maybelline. Wow, I should know. I'll put it in the description because I don't really remember. Um, okay, next is what's your go-to coffee order? I actually don't like coffee at all. Like anything that tastes like coffee, I don't like coffee drinks, I don't like any of it. I've tried like white chocolate mochas, all that kind of stuff that's supposed to be the least coffee flavored and I don't like any of them. But I do like Diet Coke. I know that's really bad for you. And I know that it's like, I don't know, all that stuff. Like, don't come at me. I'm aware. Um, but that's what I drink. Okay. So next question is, what am I going to grad school for? So I'm actually applying to grad school. I just finished applying last night. I just submitted my application. I am trying to go to a school in Alabama. I, said I applied to two. And so we'll see how that goes. I want to go for like advertising and PR or like journalism, like something in the communications realm because that's what I did undergrad in and that's hopefully what I will end up working in um, if I don't work for my parents, which um, I love working for my parents, but also like I wanna do something with my degree too. So I guess we'll kind of see what happens with that. Okay, so getting a little more personal, which I'm also filming this at nine o'clock in the morning. So spilling all my personal stuff to you at nine in the morning is kind of strange, but it is what it is. So someone said you talked about a marriage breakup, engagement breakup, same thing. Well, not the same thing. I'm not like, you get what I mean. How did I cope with that? Um, so yeah, I, like my fiance and I broke up almost six months ago now. I made a video about that and I haven't really talked about it very much since other than in like one other video because we didn't break up on bad terms. And so I really don't want to sit here and like hash out personal information about us because I have a lot of respect for him and his family and my privacy when it regard like in regards to that. But I will tell you guys, it was obviously really hard. I mean, we were together for like two years, like more than two years and we had planned a whole wedding together. All we had to do was show up, <laughs> like everything was done. So it was obviously hard. Um, like the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. But I coped with that by staying super, super busy. Um, I just plan stuff back to back to back all the time. We went on vacation the day after it happened, kind of like, I mean, we used, we were planning it anyway, but it kind of just like moved it along. And I stayed around my family like constantly, like I was either staying at my parents' house or they stayed with me for like the first month, honestly, I wanna say, because it was, it's like a huge like system shock. So I did that. I stayed around my friends all the time. I did start going out more, which like, I mean, do what you want, I don't care. I'm not a huge going out person. So for me, that was a little different, but I just tried to keep really busy so that I didn't just kind of like dwell on it and get like super depressed because obviously that's like a huge thing and that could easily have happened. Um, the next question was, what advice would you give someone in the same situation? 
So I actually heard about a million people that like had the same thing happen to them after this happened to me. Like everyone and their brother came out of the woodwork and was like, I broke off an engagement. Oh my gosh, like you're not the only one, which was so nice kind of to hear because I was like, I feel like this is such a huge thing that I have no one to talk to about it. Um, but some advice that I would give if you're breaking off an engagement or if you're, I mean, I can't give you advice if you're getting a divorce because I don't know, but, or if you're breaking off like a long-term relationship or anything like that, one thing I didn't do that I kind of wish I would have is I didn't like mourn the relationship. I, like I said, like threw myself into other things. So I don't think I really took enough time to get over it. I think that if you don't kind of take like a week or something to really just sit in your feelings and like be upset, it kind of delays the process a lot because you stay in like the shock phase for a little while. Like I think I was honestly in shock about it up until like kind of recently because I never really dealt with it. I was just kind of like, we're just gonna keep going. Like I'm just gonna throw myself into work and friends and YouTube and like, I am just not gonna think about it. Like everything's fine. And that worked for a really long time until it didn't anymore. So I had to finally kind of come to terms with it and it hurt all over again, six months later. So my advice to you would like, be upset about it for a little while like that sounds really dumb but like eat some ice cream watch some chick flicks like be upset because it'll help along the way a lot better um but after that like like how i did it a little too early is try and stay busy i mean if you kind of have your time of morning and then you get really busy it's like super helpful because you can like get into other things and make sure that you're not spending all your time doing that i'm not saying don't do that obviously i just told you to do that but um try and like pick up new hobbies and stuff like that like find yourself again that was something that i found like the hardest thing in the entire world was to figure out who i was outside of a relationship because i'm the kind of person that like was always in a relationship i had to be dating someone or talking to someone and so like i had no idea what i was doing by myself i was always so and so's girlfriend and then so and so's fiance and i had no idea what i was doing alone i didn't know how to do it i didn't know like how to function so find yourself because otherwise you're gonna bring all that baggage into your next relationship and it's going to be not fun. So try not to do that because that person doesn't deserve it and you don't deserve the hurt that goes with like dragging old baggage into a relationship either. Um, and then my two like last tips for that are like, don't look through old pictures. Like I understand if you do like at first and like you probably still have stuff of each other's, but like try Bennett don't bark <laughs> but like try not to go through old pictures and think about old things because I found myself doing that a lot and then when I really thought about it I was like our relationship hasn't been like that in so long we have been upset for a while now like we haven't been that like happy laughing couple in a while so don't do that to yourself that's not how your relationship is anymore it's really hard to come back from something like breaking up after a long time and people do but your relationship is not probably going to be the same. So don't look at those things that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, another thing was give really sentimental stuff to like a trusted family member or something. So I obviously had like an engagement ring and all this wedding stuff. Like I had planned a whole wedding. My whole house was wedding stuff. So that was really hard because I wasn't ready to get rid of it, but I didn't want to have it here to just look at all the time either. So I gave a lot of it to my parents to keep it their house which was amazing. Um, if you don't have someone to give it to, just like put it away. Don't leave it out everywhere. You don't need constant reminders of how things have changed. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> and then the last question in regards to that was, well, there's like one more, but why did we break up? I kind of explained this in my addressing things video, but I'll explain it a little bit more in detail now. Um, we just were different, very different people. So we had very different interests and usually that's fine. Like my parents are total opposites. My brother and sister-in-law are total opposites and they are perfect together, but not everyone is like that. That doesn't work for everybody. It didn't work for us. Um, we just couldn't get it together kind of. Like we really tried and it just didn't work out. We gave it our all, we went to counseling, we did everything and it just, we never, kind of got to that point. Um, and moving in together really showed us that. So as much as I wanna be like, don't move, like I was always the person that believed not to move in together until marriage, that's like how I was raised. But I'm very happy that we did because I learned so many things about myself and about what I need from someone and what I 
am lacking and able like my ability to give somebody else and so that moving in together showed me that and nothing else could have um we have very different personalities very different like priorities and like how we wanted to do things were very different and we were both very kind of stubborn um and honestly our relationship was amazing for so long but then things started to go poorly and sometimes it's hard to get back from that and I think it made us both really immature at the end and then we just had a lot of problems so that's what happened um and the last question in regards to that is like what priorities are important to align with your potential spouse or something like that so I tried to pick ones that not everyone says obviously there are some that of course need to align like I mean if like religion is important to you it's usually nice if like you have common things with religion and like stuff like that I mean obviously those kind of things are important but some things that like I realized were going to be more of an issue than I thought were make sure that you guys either have like the same communication style or you know how to work with the other communication style so like for me I'm very like I need to address something head on right away I want to talk about it I want to discuss it and my um partner ex I don't know I just don't like want to like put his name out there even though everyone knows um was not like that he like needed time to kind of like think about things and go over it before he really wanted to talk about it and those two things don't mesh well and we did not figure that out <laughs> very well and so you have to figure that out because if you don't communicate the same way you got to figure out how to do it because if you don't you're always just going to be fighting over stuff because someone didn't say something or someone said too much so figure that out um and another thing that was huge was like holidays. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have thought about trying to do two holidays with two separate fam, like a holiday with two separate families, but it's super hard. So figure that out like really early on because people's feelings get hurt and you don't want them to, but you're also trying to balance like your life together and then your life with your family and his life with his family or her family, whatever. So figure that out early on because that causes a lot of problems. So, <laughs> okay. On to lighter stuff. So who inspires me most on YouTube or Instagram? YouTube, Mallory Irvin, hands down, no matter what, every day. Love listening to her. Honestly, she's amazing. She is like an absolute inspiration and I could watch all of her videos. I could literally watch her just live her day-to-day -day life, which I do often and love it. Um, next is Maddie Bernard. I'm obsessed with her. I didn't even find her until kind of recently and now I rewatch her videos all the time. And I love her. She's just so real and so down to earth and she doesn't seem like she's putting up this front. Um, obviously when you make YouTube videos you put up a little bit of a front because you're filming like you're talking to yourself but <laughs> she just seems so amazing and I love all of her Instagram posts like I just love her. I love her vibe. She's just so like confident without being annoying and like cocky you know what I mean so I really like her and then for Instagram I've always loved Emily Ann Gemma. I think that's how you say it. Um, I love her like her style her everything she's pregnant again she's had a baby well I think he's like one or something now um and I'm obsessed with their whole family okay next um what are dream brands I could work with so this was hard for me because I love a ton of brands but I'm kind of thinking more of like beauty and then a little bit of like clothes I'm not thinking so much like Chanel like of course I would like to work with Chanel but for me loving tan first of all because I am obsessed with their products and use them all the time between them and Saint Tropez, like those are the tanners I've always used, but Loving Tan, since I discovered them kind of recently, I like live off Loving Tan. Um, so Loving Tan, Laura Mercier, obviously, I love their makeup, like everything's amazing. Um, and then for clothing, I really love recently Pretty Little Thing. Their stuff's kind of hit or miss. Um, you have to kind of like search it out like size wise, quality wise, but I really love their stuff for like t-shirts and going out wear and like comfortable clothes. I just got a bunch of their stuff and I love it. And then honestly like an active wear brand would be amazing because obviously I have been in the active scene for a while despite the fact that like I'm not that active right now but like workout brands or anything kind of like that I'm not really into like the skinny tea stuff so not that but like active wear stuff like that um let's see last couple questions are um how do I afford high-end items so I do a lot of hauls for high-end items and I try to explain kind of how I ended up with them in each video but to kind of break it down I do save a lot of money like I'm very careful with my money so that when I want to spend it I have it so if I don't need the money for something that's kind of like I have a short term and a long term savings this is going to get real money real quickly I have a short term and a long term savings so my long term is saving for like 
a house someday, like another house or like something like that. Um, and then my short term is for like bills, things I pay monthly, stuff like that. And then my regular checking account is for extra stuff. So just like groceries and food and everything like that. Um, and so every so often I'll pull from like my short term savings to buy stuff that I really want. If I have extra money after what I have to pay for anyway. Um, a lot of things are gifts from like my parents or other people, like my family members, stuff like that. And then I also, if I haven't used stuff in a really long time, so I used to be really into Lily Pulitzer and then I wasn't anymore. So I resold a lot of my stuff and I use that money. If I want to buy something new, I like try to get rid of other stuff. And I also buy, I wouldn't say a lot of stuff, but like a decent amount of stuff from Poshmark, like resale. So things like Lululemon, everything like that, like I'll buy that stuff resale sometimes. Um, if I either can't find it or if it's just like disgustingly expensive at the store, I'll try and find it on Poshmark. So, and last one is what do I do to maintain my look? So usually my look is just rolled out of bed ratchet, um, but I do have eyelash extensions. Um, that's why I look like I have fake eyelashes on all the time. I don't, um, I was gonna do a video about them and I think I still might like filming her doing them because she's amazing. I love my eyelash lady, um, Kim, she's like the bomb. And so I might do that, but I do have eyelash extensions. I am now starting to do like facials. I just got one recently, which is like, I feel like my skin looks so much better because I was breaking out there for a while. And so I'm starting to do those monthly and I'm actually doing some new stuff coming up soon. Even today I might be filming, I don't know, watch on my Instagram. If I decide not to make a video about it, I'll do Instagram videos. Um, I'm getting something different done that I haven't ever had done. So I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. And that's it. I do a lot of like hair masks and stuff like that and face masks to try and keep my hair and face healthy. Although my face is just kind of a war with my hormones and myself and like the amount of things I put in my body, like sugar <laughs> sometimes. So just depending on that is how my face goes. I don't think I have any control over it anymore. Well, I mean, I do, but my face mask is not gonna cure what I've been eating. So that's what I do. Um, so yeah, that was all the questions I had. If y'all have any other questions, like I love these kind of videos, sit down and talking videos are my favorite kind. I also put up a new wall, like I did this. And if you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that it's actually really ugly behind the couch, like bed thing, because I did it alone and I ran out like four times. It was not good. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I love, again, making these kind of videos. So if you have any other questions or if you want to see more of these kind of videos, let me know. I'm gonna be doing more health stuff coming up soon because a lot of people want to see stuff like that, like grocery hauls, workouts, like all that kind of stuff. So, and I might be doing more makeup looks soon. So let me know if there's anything specific you guys want to see. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm so happy that people enjoy these because sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself. I know I say that a lot, but I really do. And then people comment and I'm like, oh my God, it's not like, just someone I know. It's someone I don't even know that has a comment about my video. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this again. Please like and comment and subscribe. Comments make my day. I try to answer every single one or at least like them if they're like one word. Sometimes I just like them, so yeah. But anyway, have a great day.